It is nearly impossible to escape advertisements. Advertisements are expertly crafted pieces of propaganda placed by companies and corporations with the sole purpose of persuading you to spend your hard-earned money. But do you know what you're actually buying? First, let me tell you what a corporation is. Corporations are companies. Corporations and companies have the same rights as people do, but lack human emotions and motives. What, what exactly is a corporation? Joe Badaracco, professor of business as Business Ethics at Harvard Business School states in the 2006 documentary film, The Corporation, it's a group of individuals working together to serve a variety of objectives, the principal one of which is earning large, growing, sustained legal returns for people who own the business. It is defined at dictionary.com as an association of individuals created by law or under authority of law, having a continuous existence independent of the existences of its members and powers and liabilities distinct from those of its members. An extremely important thing to note here is how and when modernized corporations receive their legal powers. Howard Zinn gives us a little insight into the history of corporate agendas and also in the corporation. He states, the 14th Amendment was passed at the end of the Civil War to give equal rights to African Americans, and therefore it is said, no state can deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law. And that was in, intended to prevent the states from taking away life, liberty, and property from African American people as they had done so for much of our history. And what happens is the corporations come into court and corporate corporation lawyers are very clever. They say, oh, you can't deprive a person of life, liberty, or property. We are a person, a corporation is a person. And so that the Supreme, and the, and the Supreme Court goes along with that and it was made into law. They are legally recognized as people. Corporations were given the rights of immortal persons, immortal persons with no conscience. With this ruling, corporate entities are corporate entities can buy and sell property, borrow money, sue and be sued in court. This means that you are left with an immortal entity with power, money, and resources far beyond that which we are capable of, without actually having to endure any of the consequences for its own actions. What is their purpose? Their sole purpose. Of these, the sole purpose of these corporate citizens is to produce goods and services to us, which is good and is of value to all. The problem comes with the profit motivation, because to the people behind these corporations, there's no such thing as enough profit. And what does that mean for us? They're required by law to place the financial interest above competing interests. In fact, the corporation is legally bound to put its bottom line ahead of everything else, even the public good. Why is this an issue? Externalities. What is an externality and why should we care? Milton Friedman, a Nobel Prize winning economist, explains the, in, in, also in the corporation that an externality is the effect of a transaction between two individuals on a third party who has not consented to or played any role in the carrying out of that transaction. And there's real problems in that area. There's no, about, no doubt about that. A corporation is an externalizing machine very similar to the nature of a shark. Each is efficiently designed to accomplish particular objectives. Upon achieving these goals, whether it be for the shark to acquire food for itself by any means necessary, or the corporate citizen to increase profit by any means necessary, there isn't any question of malevolence or will. These things have within themselves, by nature, those characteristics that enable it to do that for which it was designed. The following are some instances and effects of externalization. An article published by Associated Press in 2010 tells but one small story of a factory fire occurrence. A local journal journalist at the scene told the Associated Press the blaze broke out on the two upper floors during a lunch break. A gate on the stairwell was locked, trapping people inside the factory, which mainly produces t-shirts for international brands. The Ganta Television reported at least 27 people died and more than 100 were injured. A witness saw 50 to 60 people jumping off the 10th floor to escape the raging blaze. Mind you, this is all for t-shirts, so probably, wearing, probably myself, actually. Bangladesh is but one instance of a country that exports goods out of crowded, unsafe garment factories, just like the one mentioned. The AP article continues, Bangladesh has about 4,000 garment factories that, 4,000, that's an insane amount, I just realized that, that export more than 10 billion worth of product, products a year, mainly to the US and Europe. Customers include Walmart, H&M, Gap, JCPenney's, Coles, Levi Strauss, and Tommy Hilfiger, just to name a few. An article published by the Institute for Global Labor and Human Rights, published April 14, 2010, highlights some recent issues at IBG Jordan, a large textile factory in Jordan where 12,000, excuse me, 12,000
1,200 guest workers from Sri Lanka, Bangladesh, and India, 75% of whom are women and have been trafficked to Jordan and held as indentured servants. They get their passports taken away and they're indefinitely held there. The women are forced to work 16-hour shifts, seven days a week. There are also mandatory 23-hour shifts at least once a week. These exhausted workers are routinely are are routinely work at the factory over 110 hours a week. The workers are cheated out of over half their legal wages due to them. Instead of earning $85.96 for working 102 hours a week, the workers are paid at most just $35.77, or less than $0.35 cents an hour. The minimum wage in Jordan is $0.74 cents an hour. The workers are paid just $0.09 cents for each pair of women's pants they sew for dealers. They're are credible allegations of sexual harassment and even the rape of a young Sri Lankan woman. And workers report that at least two of their colleagues are overworked to death. The workers are housed in filthy, primitive dorms not fit for human beings. They have hot, hot water, um, or maybe just water at all, for two or three hours every week. Um, and they're all crammed in there at the same time. There's bed bugs all over the place. It's absolutely disgusting, terrible conditions. There, these are just a few of the sickening, endless amounts of inhumane acts associated with individual and corporate greed. So what can we do and why? The corporate greed, making all of this happen, is only concerned about one thing, this. So who you give your money to and why is all that matters in this game. Only buy local and fairly traded products as often as possible. According to Fairtrade.net, the benefits of buying fair trade are stable prices, fair trade premiums, and empowerment of farmers and workers. Visit farmer's markets as often as possible. Ask yourself at the checkout line, do you really need what you're about to purchase or if the wants are reasonably justified? Educate yourself. Know where your products come from. Madeinusa.org is a nonprofit organization that gives links and information for products that, you guessed it, are made right in the US. Care about the people who are forced to work in these textile factories like IBG Jordan. Imagine that these people are your friends and your family. Keep an ear out for corporate happenings. Generally, if stock prices are up, moral integrity is down. Try not to fall victim to convenience shopping. Buy secondhand as often as possible. Learn to repair your old clothes or broken items around the house. Take a class on sewing or basic repair if one is offered. eHow.com has videos and guides on how to do just about anything you want to do. Talk to your grandparents more. My grandparents, for instance, were domestic ninjas and could repair or grow just about anything and rarely had to purchase anything. Although we live in America, the land of the free and the home of the brave, the blood of our brothers and sisters all over the world is on our hands. Every time we hand a corporate giant our vote, we vote for that giant to go and do whatever it is necessary, whenever it is necessary, to get us our products cheaper and faster. So next time you go to the store and get something you really don't need, I beg you to stop and ask yourself, what am 